the state of electric cars in Singapore at the moment is a bit of a dreary one. Sure, there are a whole number of them at all sorts of different price points, but with the exception of Porsche Taycan, Teslas, and perhaps the Jaguar I-Pace, there isn't a whole lot for car enthusiasts to get excited about. Until now, we're here at Suntec City for a little preview of the newest kit on the EV block, the Audi e-tron GT. You know, before today, I was kind of indifferent to the e-tron GT. I thought, it's just another EV, meh, right? But after doing the research and now seeing it in person, I have to say, it looks really, really good. But first, let's get the introductions out of the way. The e-tron GT is Audi's third dedicated EV model after the e-tron and e-tron Sportback, which are both SUVs. As its name implies, the GT is a Grand Tourer, a sporty four-door fastback made to cruise around in style and comfort. Think of it like an electric A7 and you won't be far off. Two models are available, the $489,000 e-tron GT Quattro and this, the $620,000 RS e-tron GT. Both have a motor on each axle, so unlike the rear-wheel drive base Taycan, these are all-wheel drive only. Normally, the base Quattro makes around 470 horsepower, while the sporty RS gets close enough to 600 horsepower. But activate launch control and for two and a half seconds, these numbers will jump up to 530 and 646 horsepower respectively, thanks to an overboost function. Coincidentally, that puts the RS bang in between the Taycan 4S and Turbo in terms of power. 0 to 100 km an hour in the Quattro takes 4.1 seconds, while the RS will do it in under 3.3 seconds. Other chassis bits that are optional on the Quattro and standard for the RS include air suspension, tungsten carbide brakes which last longer and produce less dust, and a locking rear differential for better traction when exiting corners or for pulling skids. Both cars have the same 93kWh battery, which gives the Quattro a maximum range of 487km, while the RS makes do with just 430. Now, the Echon GT supports fast charging up to 270kW, which is powerful enough to give 100km of range in just 5 minutes. But there's no such charger available in Singapore yet, although Audi Singapore does have a 120kW charger, with which is giving free charging to all each one owners till the end of the year. But even on a 50 kilowatt charger that you find out in public here, you'll still get from 20 to 80 percent charge in under an hour. I keep mentioning the Taycan quite a bit. That's because that and the Echon GT are related, sharing their platform and around 40 percent of components. But you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at them. At the front, the traditional big Audi grille has been blanked off with this textured panel. Then there's functional aero devices all over the car like these air vents in the front bumper and behind the front wheels, the rear diffuser, the two-stage rear spoiler, and aero blades in the wheels. All of this helps the car cut through the air for better efficiency. Apart from a similar side profile and this droopy rear end, the e-tron GT looks completely different to the Taycan. So instead of a smooth, almost pebble-like look, the e-tron looks a lot more aggressive and very Audi-like. Check out these blistered wheel arches along the side, a trademark fast Audi feature since the original Quattro. Coolest of all though, and this is something that Audi has excelled at for a long time, are the lights. LED matrix as standard or on the RS, laser lights. And when you unlock the car, they do this. It's a car with freaking lasers on its head. Freaking laser beams attached to their head. How cool is that? Inside the e-tron GT, I'm quite pleased to say that it's all quite conventional and again looks completely like how you think an Audi should. Three things of particular note up here. First is the gear selector, which is this neat little rocker switch that looks a bit like an extra smooth soap bar. Just behind that is this circular button which you press to activate the functions for the audio and if you want to adjust the volume, you start your finger around in a circle, just like an old iPod. Next are some things specific to the e-tron GT. There's a special e-tron only display for the virtual cockpit here and the shift pedals on this lovely perforated leather steering wheel which control the brake regeneration rather than the gear shifts. Now, Audi says that in its strongest setting, the brake regen can give as much as 0.3G of deceleration, which should be enough for you to drive around town without ever having to touch the brakes. Finally, where most new big Audis have a dual touchscreen setup in the middle here, the e-tron GT only has one for the infotainment functions. So, how about aircon and ventilation controls? They're all in this row of honest to goodness, easy to use, non-distracting physical buttons. Yes. And in the back, there's enough space to be comfortable despite the car's low 1.4 meter height. 
that's partly thanks to cutouts in the battery pack under the floor, which creates more room for your feet. Looking at the shape of the middle seat though, I think it definitely works better for just 4 people rather than 5. You can get a carbon fibre roof as an option, but with the sloping roof line and shallow windows, the interior can feel claustrophobic. Thankfully, a panoramic glass roof comes standard instead, which does make the cabin much brighter. So that has been a quick tour of the new Audi e-tron GT. We've not driven it yet, but we'll try to arrange a test drive and review of that as soon as we can, so look out for that. Thanks for watching.